So you got this crazy old vintage lens and an interchangeable lens camera, and you're thinking, wouldn't it be cool if I could just sort of use this lens on this camera? And you can totally do this, but there's a few things you should know. By the end of this video, you'll be able to adapt virtually any lens to any camera. You may not want to, but we'll get into that. This is a camera with its lens off. Yours might be a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. At this point, it doesn't really matter, just that the lens can come off on purpose, you know, like it was designed to do that. Where you attach the lens to your camera is called the mount, and it's not universal or standard. Throughout the history of cameras, there have been loads of them, and you need to find out which mount your camera is. In order to get a lens that was designed for a different camera mount onto your camera mount, you need what's called an adapter. And fortunately, there are companies out there who also think adapting vintage lenses are cool and have created adapters for common camera and lens mount. Photo Deox is a company that I've used and their website is really nice because you can look up by mount, both lens type and camera body mount and see if there's adapter available. If there is, that's awesome, go for it. They've already done your homework for you. They make good mounts and they're pretty affordable. But what if you can't find the adapter you need on a site like that, an adapter that's not already made? Well, chances are it's because of one of two reasons. Either your lens or camera mount is just not a popular one, or that lens and camera mount combination cannot be adapted. Ha, cannot. I love a good challenge. We'll tackle that first problem right now by making our very own adapter. And in the process of doing so, you'll find out how to address the second problem. This is a lens my friend and buy me a coffee supporter sent me after we were chatting about it on my private Discord server. And she was lamenting that she couldn't attach it to her modern Fujifilm mirrorless camera because no mounts existed. And I said, ha, that sounds like a challenge for me. I've done loads of funky adapters in the past and it's super fun, like adapting Pentax K mount lenses to an Olympus Pen FT half frame film body or mounting Pentax Auto 110 glass onto a Ricoh GXR Leica M mount. I mean, just some really funny stuff. And it's just a great way to guarantee that you're the hippiest hipster this side of the Mississippi. Before we can get started designing something from scratch, there's a few things that you'll need. One, lots of note paper or something on the computer to take lots of notes because you're going to need to jot down some good information and sketch out some things. And then you'll need access to a 3D printer. And the best way to do this is to make friends with a nerd. And if you're watching this video, that should be pretty easy to do. But also check out local universities or public libraries. At least in the United States, there's loads of access to 3D printers around. And then finally, you'll need patience. Lots of patience, <laughs> especially if this is your first time. If you're designing your own adapter, this is the most critical part that you need to get right. The distance between the sensor and the lens is called the flange distance and it's measured in millimeters. When lenses are designed for a specific mount, they're designed to focus light on a particular plane at a certain distance. And if you mess up that distance, you mess up your ability to focus on subjects far or near. If you make that distance closer than it was designed, then you can't focus to infinity or objects in the distance. And if you make it too far, then you essentially turn any lens into a macro lens. And this is how cheap extension tubes work. Now, the good news is in almost all cases, you don't need to measure this yourself because it's already provided on the internet. And I'll link that in the description as well. And to make your own adapter, you'll need the flange distance of the lens you're trying to adapt and the camera mount you're trying to adapt it to. And what you want to know for your adapter is the difference of those two numbers. Now, at the beginning of the video, I said that you can adapt any lens to any camera, but that you may not want to, and flange distance is why. And remember, I said if you play with that number anyway, you make it too short or too long for a lens, then you affect that lens's ability to focus. And then you end up with lenses on camera bodies that are only macro lenses. And this is what makes mirrorless cameras so cool and why adapting Vinci's lenses has surged in popularity over the last couple of years. And that's because, because mirrorless mounts have such a short flange distance, you can adapt almost any vintage lens to it because there's always gonna be enough room, almost always gonna be enough room that you can achieve the full focus range designed for that lens. Now, don't let this stop you though. You can go crazy. You can adapt lenses and know that you're only gonna focus them in a certain range or just macro lenses. So you can have fun with it, but it is generally harder to adapt lenses to a DSLR camera, for instance, because uh, DSLRs have that room for the mirror box. So the flange distance is gonna be larger and then you might not have any room left over for an adapter. The formula is take your lens flange distance minus your camera mount flange distance. And if that number is positive, 
in a significant number, not just like 0 0.01 millimeters, but a significant enough number that you could actually create an adapter in that space, then you're golden. You can make an adapter. In this case, because I don't know the flange distance of this lens because it's not listed anywhere, because it's a third party hack of a camera system, um, I'm just gonna use the Argus bayonet mount which I found somewhere and I don't know, maybe it's similar, but I'm already preparing myself for a lot of mess ups here and trial and error because I really have no idea. Now, the first thing you're gonna wanna do before you even go into your 3D modeling design program is to go out there and see if there are already models for those two mounts that you're trying to use. Sometimes the models for each mount already exist for different adapters out there for free on the web and just nobody has put them together in one adapter. So in my case, I went and I searched for the Argus C4. I didn't see anything available for that. Kind of makes sense, but obviously there are several for the Fujifilm X system. So I found a good one that looked nice and I went ahead and downloaded this and saved it off to the side. What's cool about the 3D printing community is people make these models available for free all the time and just leave them out there. And that's what we're gonna do when we're done with this as well, just give back to the community. And then of course you just leave attribution for any models that you may have repurposed. If you were able to find mounts for both systems, then you can kind of just chop them into pieces and get the correct distance. And then there's your adapter. And that's what I've done before in the past sometimes, and it's worked out really nicely. In this case, uh, we have to totally redesign one of the parts. So we're gonna go into this editing software and design it from scratch. But by the way, I've been showing you the front of this lens, but I haven't showed you the back yet. And it's really weird. This is how camera wiki describes it. It says the mount is a breech lock type with a rotating ring actuated by a tab that extends outside of the lens barrel. The mount is unusual in that the breech lock ring is set inside the outer perimeter of the lens barrel. <laughs> I could go on and on, but I won't. It's the most confusing mount I've ever seen. And this is where the notepad comes in handy. I'm just gonna sketch out kind of what this looks like and take tons of measurements. So after some measuring, I'm thinking a skinny ring with little tabs to slide under the black tabs. And I'm just gonna whip that up real quick in Tinkercad using the measurements that I took. This isn't a Tinkercad tutorial, but just know it's a very simple piece of software that's actually pretty powerful. Okay, after a few minutes, this is what I came up with. And once again, I have no idea how the flange distance is gonna work. So I just kind of winged it based off of the information we had earlier. But because I have the 3D printer right here, we're just gonna rapid prototype, print this out and see what we get. Okay, the print is done and it works, but immediately I noticed a big problem and that is the way that this lens focuses. So I'm able to get my tabs underneath the black tabs and it fits really nice and snug. But when I tried to focus, the whole adapter moved. And I should have done this earlier, I just really wasn't paying attention. But when I spin to focus and I keep the body still, which is how most lenses work, then these inner tabs move, meaning that if I'm using these inner tabs to lock it into the adapter, uh, anytime I focus, they'll just pop right out. And indeed, that's what's happening. So basically what that means is I can't rely on the tabs underneath the black part to hold it in place because it'll just pop right out. So instead, I think what I'm gonna do is just use the outer ring because I think I can just friction fit it. It's actually a really nice, tight, snug fit and it'll just hang out on the outer ring. I'll make it thin enough to pass these black tabs and that should work. So I'm just gonna make some modifications here in Tinkercad and then print that out. Okay, I'm super excited about this because that actually works. We now have a working lens that can focus and it can attach to the Fujifilm. Um, I did notice that it is only focusing to things about a foot away and it won't focus any farther. So that does tell me that I need to shorten that flange distance, shorten the distance of the adapter to shorten that flange distance um, if it's not able to focus to infinity. So I'm just going to go down by about two millimeters each time and make some notes about it and uh, see if we can't get a working adapter. Okay, that took a long time and more prototypes than I'm willing to admit. <laughs> I did eventually get the flange distance correct and we have a working adapter that focuses to infinity. I ran into some other weird problems that really are more to do with this lens than any other lenses, so I don't think they apply to you as much. And then I did spend some time optimizing the model so that you could print it without using supports, which is just a really nice, convenient thing. Let me know what crazy lens and camera combinations you're adapting with in the description and let me know if I can help you if you're designing one yourself. Did you know that ultra fast lenses are getting more and more affordable each and every day? I talk about that in this next video with one very special F0.95 lens that you can buy for Fujifilm. I'll see you over there and until next time, happy snapping.